no Nick Smith Jr., no problem for the Arkansas Razorbacks, who destroy the UNC Asheville Bulldogs by a score of 85 to 51. This is Arkansas Basketball Recap. I'm Daniel Price. That's Jacob Price on a day where most of Northwest Arkansas is locked up in their houses as we have the Arctic blast temperatures coming in. But uh, we got a basketball game to break down. I wish there was like nothing but basketball games on all day today because I'm going to be pretty much just sitting around the house making a huge pot of chili trying to find things to watch. But Sunday Christmas is annoying because you don't, you just get the weekend off. I mean, some people get Monday off or maybe people get Friday off, but basically nobody does anything. On Like today is the most annoying day because if everybody feels like they have to work, but nobody's doing anything today, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you're not getting anything productive done. So it feels like it's a uh, completely already the holidays, but yeah, not quite. You got to yeah. pretend like you're still working. Can't do anything outside. No, <laughs> it's way too cold. Well, let's just talk about this game then. Uh, we can do that. We okay. would have done this last night, but the, uh, it was my fault. I fell asleep. I fell asleep literally right at the end of the game and uh, woke up at one o'clock in the morning. Hey, we're, it was we're that, well. It. it was kind of my fault because I start. I had to start the game late because I had something else going on, and then yeah. You know, so I started it, was, it late too. So. Well, whatever. Uh, we'll give the people something to watch if they want to uh, while they're stuck at home doing nothing. Okay, so this game. Uh, it is first of all, the Nick Smith knee management thing. Some people are like, "Oh, it's not that concerning." They're just being careful. It's a little concerning. Like I, like I'm a little concerned as we head into SEC play. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe if he doesn't play against LSU, I'm going to be like, "I don't love this." Like this is not great. If they're just like kept him out and they just said, "You know what? A little bit of swelling. We don't. We think it'd be better to give him." you know, have a full nine days off or whatever it is between the last game and, and LSU. All right, fair enough. They thought they could handle it. They did handle it. Great. Uh, so we'll see if I am need to be concerned or if they're just being smart. And it's the management just mean we're managing it. In other words, we think it'd be unwise to play him in this game because why risk it? Okay, fine. That being said, uh, Arkansas doesn't start slow in this game. And really more than any other game, they come out and just punch a team in the face and never stop punching <laughs> this entire game. And uh, I mean, this was this was a route from the jump. I mean, this game was and you know what? You know, UNC is uh eight and four coming into this game. Uh I don't know how good they are. I mean, they're eight and four, so they, I mean they're not they're not four and eight. Uh, which is that mm-hmm. that's what it looked like. Uh, but Arkansas's defense was just stifling. It was overwhelming to them. And offensively, we just got everything at the rim. I mean, we actually shot the three pretty well for us uh, because they were, we got so many, we got some wide open looks. But dude, we were just, hey, we're just going to score it in the paint constantly on you guys. And they just, they just couldn't do anything about it. Well, that's why I think that. In a weird, I mean, you know, normally in a route like this, there's not a whole lot you can look at. But I, I actually thought it was a very interesting style of route because we've talked about this before. Every team is capable of having one of those games where guys that don't normally hit threes hit two or three threes, and the guys that do hit threes just shoot eighty percent and hit six, seven threes, and you end up just having a shooting night that's crazy and you just bury a team and they just can't get out from under the avalanche because you just coincidentally on that night have all your guys who really high percentages and you bury a team that way. That's not at all what happened with this. And it was, it was much more now to what degree, what they, what we did was product of their uh, ineffectiveness on defense. It's hard to say because You know, we haven't seen that team a lot. Um, And I'm sure to some degree, it's probably a little of both. But as an Arkansas fan, everything we've been talking about, about what's bad about these athletic sort of freestyle offense that must runs where sometimes they just look like they're just standing there with the ball and they don't know who to pass it to. And it gets very 
one-on-one and slowed up and there's like one pass or no pass and somebody's just attacking three guys. It was like a totally different team. Like the way they won that game was through ball movement. And mm-hmm. it was like, I mean, even the, I mean, the, the announcers were like flabbergasted and I was too. Like, I can't believe how they moved the ball. Like they passed the ball, especially in the first half. It did, it did bog. They got, you know, in the second, like kind of like the third quarter, you know, and that they, they definitely got a little bit of that. We're up by 25. How do we keep the same amount of energy and enthusiasm? Yeah, it's, it's, so it got it's, a little, it's virtually impossible. Right. But the, that first half, I still don't know what to think of it. Like what was going, I don't know if it's that, like I said, those, those guys are defensively terrible. Like their strategy was bad, but cause they tried a couple of different things. I mean, they tried to go zone and that didn't work. Or if Arkansas is starting to get it and they're starting to click, the, well, and they're the, starting the cuts, to gel. The cuts were mm. great. I mean, guys were just finding the cutting to open spots, and, and that's what it felt like. There. It felt like, oh no, these guys are starting to understand what Must wants, and they're starting to feel each other in that way that you know that that intangible way that you can't teach which is the reason everybody talks about we got to get these guys together and like so they learn each other because there is something obviously knowing how another guy plays you start to know like where he wants the ball what hand he wants it on and there's just a i mean they call it jelly and like it looked like they're like I said, it was probably some of both but that was very encouraging for uh, a razorback fan as far as we know these guys are talented. We know that they're athletic. If they can start to click and move the ball like that, it's next level. You know what I mean? Like we've been waiting for, I, I mean, I was, I wasn't even, didn't even have high hopes that that was ever a possibility. I just thought they were probably going to mostly get a little bit better at that and then overcome it with athleticism. But if they could be a ball swinging team like that, where they just, the ball just moves, you're going to get, dunks every time I mean, yeah, which well, is what they did do you know what I mean? well, well dude you, you have like i mean we we had 10 turnovers and 20 assists that's that's the recipe right there dude you do some of you do that you, you win that game every time you turn yeah, the ball over like 20 t- you turn, yeah it was crazy and then we we had 15 steals that's ridiculous because that's not yeah. 20 turnovers like, i i i let me look here how many turnovers did they have? They turned the ball over 20 times, but 15 of those turn uh, UNC turned the ball over 20 times. 15 of those turnovers were just straight up getting the ball stolen from you. They were still stolen past. It wasn't like stepping out of bounds, walk, charge, that kind of stuff. Those are all turnovers. They, Arkansas took the ball away from them 15 times in that game. That's absurd. And the thing was, is we didn't have anybody. You know, in a route like that, we didn't have anyone go off. I mean, you look at the box score. Uh, now, a lot of guys, a lot of guys played, but Makai Mitchell had nine points. Jordan Walsh had four points. Anthony Black had ten points. Ricky Council had twelve points. Devo Davis had nine points. Jalen Graham has sixteen points. We'll get to him. Uh, Mikhail Mitchell had six points. Kamai Johnson had seven points. Ford had two points. Joseph Pinion had ten points. Like it's just an accumulative. Like, yeah, everybody's dude. Everybody was involved uh, in this. Yeah, they were just sharing the ball like crazy. I mean, like I said, even even the big guys were making, were giving up pretty good like position. Like I I've got the ball. I'm right under the basket. Mm-hmm. The guys here on my shoulder that can probably. I mean, like I said, it's a, still a great position to have your big man. And they would just be like, "What if I just dump one more pass?" Like then Council's got this wide open dunk. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean if you I, look like, at the if you look at the assist breakdown. Mm-hmm. Makai Mitchell has three assists. Jordan Wallace has one assist. Anthony Black has three assists. Ricky Council has two assists. Devo Davis has three assists. Jalen Graham has one assist. Kamani Johnson has two assists. Uh, Ford has two assists. Joe's opinion has three assists. Like, that's ridiculous. It is weird. Like, I'm telling you, it's much less strange to see a team get hot shooting. Because if you play enough basketball, everybody practices shooting and everybody can have a good shooting night. For for t- to get hot passing is weird. Yeah, because it's so much. It's so. It's not something you can practice as much. Like I mean, obviously you can't practice it by yourself, and mm-hmm. you can't just go out in your driveway and practice passing as easily. And it's weird. Passing is a much more niche skill because it involves 
a uh you know obviously the same kind of hand eye coordination that shooting does but it also it, it, it has um the other skill that not a lot of people have they have the talent to make a pass but they don't have the talent to see a pass which is like you have to have that kind of brain where you map where everybody is and you kind of know where they're moving and that's why it's a rare skill it's not there's not a lot of steve nashes and jason kids and that's why it is weird to see a team get that together on and have that many assists mm-hmm. spread out like that yeah and in a route like that you would be like man how many threes did we hit well not a lot because we only shot 13 of them in the whole game we shot 13 threes we made five which is you know 38.5 percent i actually will take that that's mm-hmm. fine but well, especially the quality of like they, i think they only took like maybe two of those were like yeah kind of forced a little not not really forced but where you just they somebody just popped one that maybe wasn't the best shot mm-hmm. uh the rest of them were like you have to take them you know what I mean? yeah. like wide open i th- so i think some of the things that we that you could talk about in this game is I, 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 everybody played well nobody nobody played bad in this game uh, that's just true there was not a single guy that got on the floor that played poorly everyone played very well uh I think the standout things, the uh, sort of the obvious things to talk about, and the one if we can just kind of talk about real briefly is um, Jordan Walsh is great on defense. He, I mean, he really is. Like, I, I mean, I don't know. He had, um, you know, I don't know how many of the, it, you know, he it says he had, you know, uh, two steals, but he was responsible for a whole bunch of those steals. I mean, just tipping the ball up. I mean, he's, he is annoying uh, on defense, and Devo Davis, was, you know, had his butt on the ground being crazy. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you've heard Mus lately, but Mus thinks that Devo Davis is the best perimeter defender in the country. Hmm. I mean, he's, I mean, this is what he said. He said, he said "There's no one better on on ball on like on ball defense." He said, "Devo is the best on ball defender in the country." I think, and I and I mean, I haven't watched everybody in the country, but I haven't seen anyone better than him. I mean, he. He takes defense on ball defense personally. His guy gets the ball, dude. If Devo Davis was guarding me, I would get rid of that ball so fast. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I know I'm not, I'm not a you know Division One athlete, but I've seen dudes that I still think they should get rid of the ball too, and they don't. And then he takes it from them. I'll never understand that 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 I see it so all the time, where somebody the offensive player takes it as like a, like some kind of a front. And when a guy gets down in that position and picks them up three quarters court or something, they're like, Oh, hell no. It's like, dude, all I'm thinking is I don't even want to dribble. Like I just don't have that kind of pride where I'm like, I mean, now maybe if I had better handles, I would, but I'm like, I'll just pass it. I don't want to be harassed by you. And I'm I'm certainly not going to, I've seen guys like, like, no way I'm going to split two defenders. It's like, that means somebody's open though. Mm-hmm. Like just pass the ball up the floor. Well, Devo's mm-hmm. daring you. He's like Devo is like baiting you into something that you really shouldn't do. Because Devo just believes oh. that like that if you decide that if you take the bait, that he's gonna win that more times than not. And he does. Well, that was like that guy on Sunday night where uh he like uh I can't remember, but was it Nathan picked him up at half court and he went to split two guys and I was like why would that guy try to split when Nathan picks him up at half court? Like, you know, he's going and he just took it away from him. Like, and you go, well, he's pretty young. I was like, Oh, well, that's why. (laughs) Yeah. That's all. That's why you shouldn't do it. But that's also why you would do it because you haven't learned yet. Yep. Hmm. That's right. So, uh, so those two things, uh, I think I thought Jordan and, uh, Devo's defense was great. Uh, you know, we had a lot of blocks in this game. I mean, both the Mitchell twins were just, just swatting stuff, which was great. Uh, but two two kind of obvious things to talk about that we haven't gotten to talk about a lot is uh, probably your player of the game is uh, unlikely, which is Jalen Graham coming in and playing 19 minutes and looking amazing. Crazy. I mean, he was eight of ten. Uh, you know, he grabbed uh, three rebounds, uh, had two took steals, <laughs> had two steals, had a block, took a charge, had an assist. I don't know what it is exactly that Must is looking for. He said it's defense and rebounding, which I thought he did. Now that's you know against this team, but the effort was there. But offensively, I mean, Jalen Graham is nice in the post, man. And and we didn't we didn't get to watch the last game, obviously, 
but mm. this is his second back to back good game, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of annoying that we didn't get to see the other game, but it sounded like, I mean, he's really kind of coming into his own. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we can like use that too. There's a, there's some space for that. Well, especially if Nick Smith is going to struggle. Like, like you said, I mean, I didn't really comment on that, but yeah, the Nick Smith knee thing, they're downplaying it, but dude, chronic knee problems always make me nervous mm -hmm. especially because it appears and it doesn't mean this is necessarily the case but it appears like there's certain body parts everybody kind of knows this about yourself once you get to about 40 years old but like i must have good ankles it can't be a coincidence at this point like i've never sprained my ankle severely knock on wood and i played basketball a ton i've hurt both my knees you know yeah. what i mean like i don't have good knees I've sprained and, I've sprained both my ankles lots of times have never hurt my knees. Right. And and I've hurt my back. I've got mm -hmm. a bad back and I've got bad knees. I have good ankles. And it's like I there's certain guys like LeBron James genius is that body. His body he doesn't have anything that he's ever hurt on. Like his whole career it's insane. You know what I mean? He's never hurt his knees severely. He's rolled his ankles a few times but never where he's been out for multiple games. Like the guy's a freaking machine. Some people have bad shoulders, some people have weird elbows, you know what I mean? Like those aren't as, you know, you don't hurt them as often, but like if you if you're a guy like Derrick Rose is a good example. I mean, Derrick Rose is like maybe could had a chance to be a really special, unique, like change the game with his way he plays, kind of like was, Steph Curry, he was, he was, but not with young, shooting. Was, with... For those younger people, J Derek Rose was John Morant before John Morant. Yeah, I mean, he obviously wasn't as good as shooting. Like, I mean, I don't know how good Derek Rose could have been. He was starting to but, become but a better I mean, shooter. But I mean, he was that he was that smaller guard, athletic like that, though. Yeah, his explosiveness, his speed was getting impossible to guard. I mean, he was basically also kind of Kyrie Irving without the shooting. I mean, his dribble drive was crazy, but he blew out his knee in that first that one that run, and like he was never the same since. And I mean, you don't blame him. It's like he, he guys got a reconstructed knee, and also there's a psychological component to that mm -hmm. where it's just difficult to play at the same level. I understand that, but yeah, so like it maybe you know that his knee gets better and it never bothers him again in his career. But it's also a possible indication of like a nagging weak spot in his body. I mean, you can look at him. He's a very slight guy. And um, I'm definitely nervous about it. Like if it's just like if he's going to be one of these guys that comes in, plays a couple of games, tweaks it, fits well, out for a couple I'm of games. I'm nervous about him, being, mm. you know, being able to play this season and help us. And then just as on a human level, I'm nervous about. I mean, if you're, I mean, this is a guy that's projected to go top five in the uh, in the NBA draft. I'm nervous about that uh, for him. You know, it would this. really suck if he if he didn't really contribute to this season, but also jacked up his pro career too. That yeah, would suck. I don't. I mean, you don't um, want that. You don't want that for a guy. Like, I mean, it's. I mean, if the draft was tomorrow, I can't imagine anyone's taking him that high. Uh, David. Well, know. and and that's the other thing too is is this season. You know, there's a lot of games gone by, like in, in with with gelling with the team and mm -hmm. coming into your own. Um, I mean, Kyrie Irving is a good example. I remember when Kyrie Irving came back for Duke and was near the end of that. Well, it might have even been in the tournament that he came back. Like he might have not played it at all that season. I think maybe he played like the last two games. At any rate, he was out with that knee injury, and he everybody was talking about how he's the first round draft pick pro. And I never seen. I was looking forward to seeing him. And he just looked meh and, you know, mm -hmm. he was okay. I was like, that's the guy. That's what they're talking about. And not, I mean, I'm not trying to get down on Nick Smith, but like you have to admit so far for being maybe the number one player in the country, when he's out there, you're still waiting to see it. Like mm -hmm. it, you see little bursts, but you're still like, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm, I haven't seen that thing yet, but then, I mean, like I said, they were right. I mean, Kyrie Irving, once he got totally healthy, got on a team, got back into playing shape, it's like insane. You know, his dribbling is like something I've never seen before. But and and Nick Smith probably will be that way. I'm sure those scouts are right. It's just you're starting to run out of time to wonder, is he going to be is if he because if he keeps missing games, it's like, are you going to ever be able to get to that potential? And should you just 
like, are you going to be able to help us in a way that it's worth the risk? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and not, not that we're there yet, but like you're starting to approach third of the way through the season. And it's like, I don't know. Like it's, it definitely makes me nervous. Uh, yeah. And all that saying said the um, coming out of somebody like Graham makes me feel less nervous about it because not that he would fill this at all the same role, but just another guy to give Anthony black some rest, uh, you know, and another body to put out there. Not that like I said, not that he's going to play for Anthony black, but you know what I'm saying? Just another body so that you, your guys that you need can get, you know, take a breather. So, yeah. Well, uh, uh, another thing. So on that note too, so Jalen Graham, I thought looked really good uh, that he's, his footwork is nice. Uh, his ability to feel where a defender is roll the opposite way, use each hand, either hand, um, his touch is very it was soft touch. I mean, he just gets to get that thing on the rim and he can get it to, to drop in. Uh, it was nice. Uh, so that, that was really encouraging. Uh, you had to be happy for Joseph Pinion, you know, uh, he, he played great. I mean, so he plays, he gets, he gets to play 19 minutes. Um, you know, he had, he had the two threes, which Joseph Pinion shoots the ball differently than every single guy in that team. Yeah, which is the, which is just like if I'm open, it's going up, and I think that every time I shoot, it's going in. And Musk actually talked about this in the press conference that that opinions. Not, they asked him, you know, how does it, you know, bring a guy like that in? Hasn't played a lot, and you know, but it, how does he keep his confidence high? And you know, and, and he must just um, paraphrasing, but said something to the effect of, "Well, opinions a shooter. It's what he is. So it doesn't matter. Like he he believes." that every shot he takes is going in uh, from the, you know, from the outside. And then he said this, he's like, and just as importantly, the team knows that that's who he is. And they all believe that every single shot he takes is going in. Mm -hmm. And you could tell like when he runs those corners and they're, and they're looking for him and stuff, they all think it's going in too. They all want him to shoot it. Um, so, you know, I thought, you know, I think that he's still, you know, he's, you saw sometimes he's playing defense Maybe a guy gets the corner on him or something like that. Um, but Joe's opinion is still, he's still long. You know, he's still, I mean, he's a 6'4", six, 6'5 six, guy. Uh, he's long enough to do it. I thought his effort on defense is, has been there every time I've seen him play. Uh, it, it, he might not be as, he's not as athletic naturally as some of these other guys, but he's not not athletic. And so uh, right. I think he's not, I, long, he's not, he's not as long as a lot of those guys are. Yeah. But he's not you sure. Know, his, his, he just doesn't have it. No, but his even his body type though, like his, mm -hmm. I'm guessing his wingspan is about his height. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the rest of those guys are a little bit taller, but their wingspan's like a foot longer than they are tall. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see him though. Like, if you're talking about the, if you're worried about Nick Smith, is there a way for opinion to like figure out what you know how to how he can play defense? You know, and and that's different for different guys. Like, you have to figure out like what is what do I have to do to be a great, a great defender, which is not the same thing that someone else has to do because you don't have all the same tools they do. So you got to figure out what kind of, how you're going to play it. It does seem like it's possible if he can figure some of that out, that there, maybe there is a, a role for him. And I, I think that in the future, Joseph opinion is going to play a big role on this team. I think you will, I don't think he's a guy that's going to ride the bench his whole career or anything, uh, but I think that there might be a, a space for him this year, especially if Nick Smith is limited because he, dude, Having a guy that you have to worry about on the outside like that, I, I know Mus is like you got to play defense, but the effort is there for Pinion. But man, it really makes things easier on on offense, dude. If, I, if you know if we're playing pickup ball, and I can get a guy, and maybe he's not the best defender, but I know he's going to try. And maybe he's just you know he's not uh, he's not going to be as good as some other guys, but he's going to open up the floor because he's just so dangerous and. That's kind of worth it, right? Where you're like, hey, he's not being lazy. It's not like he's not trying. He's not taking plays off, which I don't think Pinion's doing that ever. Uh, man, it helps when you have a dude that they can't leave. Yeah, well, it's a, it's actually amazing that Arkansas is as good as they are in the style that they're playing, which is basically a style where they don't have a bunch of pure shooters. Because, I mean, dude, I go up to the community center and like, I, we've talked about this all the time, like eight year olds are shooting 40 foot threes. Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry has completely ruined the game in a 
kind of good way, but like, you know, being old school, it annoys me. But no, I mean, you, we, you're even at your daughter's school, like they pull up threes on fast breaks with no rebounders mm-hmm. and their coach is fine with it. Like people just shoot like crazy these days. And um, if you look at the NBA, like there's not hardly even a big man that can't shoot a pretty high percentage of threes anymore. It used mm-hmm. to be, we'd be like, dude, the guy's like six, eight. And he shoots threes. Yeah, now it's yeah. like he's six eight and he doesn't shoot threes. Like, why? What are you even going to do with him? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, you you put guys out there like seven footers are shooting threes, you know. And, um, so so we're we are like college isn't as bad as the NBA yet, or as good as the NBA, or like it's not as three point centric yet. But it's kind of bizarre to be in the top ten with a team that doesn't have any guys that are really just knockdown snipers starting. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you got yeah, you have one you have one guy on your team that's just a knockdown sniper lethal dude, but he doesn't play that much. <laughs> right. Like and, and then you have Nick Smith, who I think is going to be a really good shooter, but he shoots off of uh, he looks to me like Kyrie Irving. He looks like he's the kind of guy that has to get in that flow because he's not tall enough to just shoot over guys all the time. So he has to get in that flow where he gets in that like, kind of like the James Harden, mm-hmm. like James Harden, almost all his shots are like in rhythm, dribble, 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 yeah. step back. And you have to be, you know, in condition and just like in the groove to do that. I'm, I have no doubt that Nick Smith probably does that in practice. And like, I'm mm-hmm. sure the scouts in high school, that's what they saw in him, but it hasn't come out yet. Like he, he's been a slightly, he's been an average shooter so far. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, the fact that we're winning games with these giant guys that don't shoot that well. I mean, they, they shoot okay, but um is yeah, eventually we're probably this game the way the game is going, you're probably going to have to recruit snipers at some point. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing the college game is gonna go the same way as the pro game where you just spread the floor and pass the ball around and chuck up threes. Yeah, that, I, the other thing about Pinion though, that game was, uh, I mean, he did have he had three assists too, um, which is which is nice, you know. So he, you know, he had the one oop to Graham, which was, I didn't, I didn't wasn't positive that Graham had that in his bag, but apparently he did. He does. He is um, bouncy too. Yeah, I mean, he got he got he had to get up there for that. I mean, actually, in the press conference, uh, they had Pinion in the and Graham were the guy the two students that they interviewed and. Um, they asked uh, Graham uh, about that, and uh, and Pinion said, oh, "I'm just glad he went and got it. It was a terrible pass. <laughs> he just threw it away." It did look it, when he threw it. It did look like, "Oh, he's not going to be able to get that." Um, but then also, I didn't know like Pinion. You wouldn't. You did. What? What? You, you probably didn't have this on your Razorback bingo card. Of, like Pinion's going to get two dunks. Like I didn't even know he had that in his bag. Like, and one of those he like cupped. And threw down, and the bench about lost their minds. But uh, so Pinion's hit, hitting threes and getting breakaway dunks. So you know, three it is, is, it is, is good, good for him. I, I thought that had to have been an encouraging game for him. Yeah. It is funny with athleticism. Like <laughs> there's just so many levels to it. Like Pinion looks like dumpy and slow and like out there compared to like Council and those guys. But like you know, if he came to play ball with us, he would look like like Nick or, or that, that was on our team, like, like, that, you know, he would look like the most athletic guy out there. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, I mean, yeah. he's dunking and stuff. And, um, yeah. but next to the, those monsters, he just looks like, like a little like bit a small and just... a little bit, yeah, he, just, he looks like <clears throat> us out there, but he's, I know he's not, he's, he's actually, you know, a, a high class athlete. He's, he's a top, he's, he's a, he's a division he's, one school. He's a top 100 recruit in the country. Yeah. 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 But, well, right on, man. Well, I I don't have a ton more other than uh, I am uh, excited to get into SEC play, and and uh, I think you know we get at LSU as a as a opener for the for the SEC, and I'm I'm here for it, man. I'm ready to see what it looks like. I really hope that that knee management is just them deciding to not risk anything happening to Nick Smith before you get into SEC play, and that he's out there and doing stuff, but. I do think that if the master plan was to, you know, and Musselman said this, he said it, it was really great to have a game going into co- before conference play 
where we got to have a good look at a lot of guys. And I think that probably was good because I think it helped build some confidence and it showed you some stuff. Mm -hmm. So I agree. uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah, dude. Um, Also, I mean, I guess everybody, you know, have a Merry Christmas. I know we didn't get, I didn't get into the comments. Like I said, I would, I was moving this week. I sold my house and I'm going to be in this closet for probably a little bit. I don't have a really a spot in this rental or anything. So I'm just going to be tucked away in the closet, but uh, I am going to try to get into those comments. Dan doesn't have an excuse. He wasn't no. moving. No. Um, I'll be okay. the uh, stereotypical person. That'll be my, that, that's the name of my YouTube guy that I, my son made for me when I set up the account to put up his gaming videos, but, um, and I'm too old er, to even try to change it. So I'm just going <laughs> to, that's what it is. Um, I was also thinking that, you know, the Razorback girls, the lady Razorbacks are really fun and good this year too. And uh, they did just drop and, two, two in a row after starting 13 and 0, which I, I mean, they lost a one, a one point in overtime. Uh, yes, but I mean, that's, ex- that's but, uh, that was exciting. Um, no, the, yeah, they're really good. Uh, they're, they're, um, they're fun to watch too. And since I, we probably don't have time to do both things, but, and not everybody's interested in both, but maybe we might, release uh maybe we'll do like at the end of these videos it won't be like it wouldn't be released on the same at the same schedule but maybe we can do a quick like 10 minute version of, for the lady mm-hmm. razorbacks for people that are interested in the lady razorbacks and um release it a day late or whatever uh, ironically so. you and i both are, both have daughters who play basketball and our and, sister i grew up watching girls basketball yeah my sister went to college and played uh, for a state championship in high school so i i just like women's basketball mm. always have so yeah yep well right on man well uh everyone have a very merry christmas uh we will be back uh after the lsu game all right guys merry christmas